and welcome. This is Perspectives on your number one television, OSR, so the Nation Star Station. My name is Fola Jogun Akinla Mialegbe, and I'm your host on the show. Well, today, Perspectives crew paid a visit to the Lekampine Tropicana Beach Resort, Ikegun Village, Lake Lagos, and um, the president invited us to his kingdom. I've been talking about kingdoms, believe me, this is really a huge one. Well, I'm talking about no other person but the President himself, His Excellency, Ambassador Dr. Lawanle Raphael Akimbaboye. Ambassador, thank you for welcoming us to your kingdom. You're most welcome. All right. Well, we'll start from getting to know you. Can you tell us more about yourself? Well, my name is uh, Olawanle Akimbaboye. Okay. The other Raphael is an adopted name from Israel. But um, that's a story for another day. All right. Uh, I went to St. Jesus College and Uyemekun Grammar School, then to Cardinal Polytechnic, where I read um, mechanical engineering briefly. Then I went to the US, read uh, business administration, and a master's in hospitality management. Wow. Uh, came back. To Nigeria in 1984 and I started the process of continent building because I'm a continent builder. How did you discover your call, your passion in life? Very early age. Okay. Uh, what well, I, think I, was, get this. I was pushed into it. When we were in the US, I it was part of what we had to do to make a living. Uh, when, even when I was doing my master's degree, uh, the easiest jobs to get in those days was that of uh, being a security operator. In the U.S., right? In the U.S. Okay. And I did more than just being a security operative. I went into management level of security operations. Oh, uh, went you into, grew yeah. into it? Yeah, or? I grew into okay. it. Yeah, because it started from when I was in college until when I get to um, university. Um, the master's program, graduate level. And you know, security is 90, 95% brains and maybe 5% force. Um, so it requires a lot of education, a lot of intelligence. Okay. So uh, most of the people that you associate with in that industry are people that are very intelligent, people that are uh, high um, level people okay. in terms of IQ. Uh, but coming back to Nigeria, uh, I found out that security was left for non-entities, mostly retired civil service men. And then we started to revitalize it, to resuscitate it, and uh, brought in graduates, groomed them, and gave them the essence of what security operations is all about. Yeah. So I think I can say from my early days in the U.S. was when I started growing interest, growing, growing interest for security operations. All right, and so when you got into Nigeria, you decided to incorporate and build the lifeguard? Well, when I got into Nigeria, I came in with a definite plan. Okay. And my plan was to twig my entire continent. Okay. I was to build my continent, but you need to start from Charity begins at home. You need to start sure. from home. And the idea was to start from Nigeria and then catapult it throughout the entire continent of Africa. So I came in as a continent builder and I took the three major, three major talents that I have, which is tourism, security and entertainment, we'll get to, the other two. to build it on. Okay. So what I did first was to they all started at the same time. I okay. had to start everything at the same time. Basically because um, I knew that they were all long-term uh, endeavors. Okay. So what was important was to start everything at the oh, same wow. time. Make your mistakes, balance it, and when you get to a point, the foundation will be ready and solid. What made you think at that point, what made you think that private security was the answer to Nigeria's security challenge at that point? Well, because I knew that your security is about intelligence. And I saw that most of the people that were participating, partaking 
that were involved in that security operations were basically um, people that are non, not educated to okay. a large extent. So, so I knew that it's not only about us changing the outlook, it's about giving dignity to it. So we brought in men in proper tie, proper attire, proper presentation, proper attitude, proper carriage, courtesy that is required for security, courtesy and firmness. Um, taught them how to uh, tell people to go to hell and they're actually looking forward to the trip. Uh, <laughs> giving them ideas of how to appeal to people and, you know, the intelligence aspect of security. And then we didn't stop there. We decided to also create a career path, a career path for them to go through where they will start and grow to a point, get their car loan, get to a point, get a house loan, wow. get to a point, That's get their own franchise. Okay. So, uh, so the, basically they can become employer of labor. Because what uh, we're lacking in West Africa in particular, in Africa in general, is that we were taught how to get jobs, not how to create, create jobs. jobs. So we needed to create job creators, okay. entrepreneurs. Okay. So when you see a corporate guards officer, that officer is actually a job creator, eventually. Okay. Uh, when he gets to a point, he's going to get his own franchise, and then he's going to run his own business and have a uh, few people under him. Under him. Okay, at this point I'd like to ask, what were the initial challenges you battled at first? Challenge of disbelief. Disbelief? Oh, disbelief, because it was new. Okay. Nobody, uh, even the general staff, really, the people that were partakers, uh, didn't believe it would happen. That, okay, so we've never had a situation where someone will give them a job and then give them an opportunity to eventually so grow, grow the and own their own business. Okay. So, and then, um, of course, in an environment where people are not familiar with a particular way of life, and something new comes about, uh, you know, you will experience uh, a lot of um, blocks. A lot of hiccups, no. hiccups, a lot of misunderstanding. Okay. But your focus must be to focus on where you're going because people cannot really see what you're saying. And you have to understand that they can't see what you're saying. They don't understand where you're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody can stop you except, except yourself. yourself. Okay. All right. Um, in your own opinion, you, you've been doing this live grad thing for how many years now, sir? Well, since 1980, over 25 years. Now. All right. With your wealth of experience and in your own opinion as someone who's been there, done that, with your level of intelligence, would you say the federal government is handling the, the security challenge you're facing in the north very well? The security challenge in the north is new. It requires a new approach. Okay. And what you find is that you cannot hold a, a government to a large extent is like a people because they're run by Nigerians generally. And there are different grades of security threats and situations. True that. There is a, the grade C, the grade B, and the grade A. The great C are perpetrators that are about naive, maybe an attitude, they are hungry, they want to steal a few naira and kobo here and there, something to eat. And if they are not killed, they move to the next stage, which is stage B, where they have a car now, they have one or two guns, and then they can then travel far from where they live to perpetrate crime. Now, the first stage is grade A, where Nigeria is today, where they plan it over the years, where they target an individual and then they plan and execute that plan, where they plan to enter into a bank. And I'm sure if anybody had said uh, 10 years ago that a Nigerian will carry a bomb and blow himself, himself. up, 
You oh. say it's impossible. Tell you, we, we so it's ourselves. a brand new security mm -hmm. threat. Uh, we've gotten to a different level entirely. Okay. It takes a while for any government or any group of people to come to terms with that and create a security plan against that. Okay. Because it's not in our psyche to throw bombs. It's not in our psyche to deal with internal threat, you know, like the Boko Haram. You know, it's when you have an external force, an external force will come from one source. They're coming from external. But when you have an internal uh, threat, they can come from anywhere. They are next to you. You don't know who they are. They are like your brother, they're like your sister. You've had cases of top level people where their children are involved in perpetration of bombs and the rest of it. So it requires now a different level of security application, sure. which is a level of security intelligence. Okay. This, and it takes a while to build security intelligence. You don't just build security intelligence that doesn't just come. It's easy to teach a man to shoot a gun. Uh, it is easy to teach a man to, to attack, but it's a bit difficult to get a man to apply intelligence. Oh, wow. And that is the level you are now. You are at a wow. level of intelligence that requires proactiveness, that requires uh, finding out who the enemy is. Because the enemy is within. That is a lot difficult to deal with. Okay. At this point now, let's take a shift to the entertainment industry now. You uh, you said your your vision they had to take off one out simultaneously not they had to move together. Now um, the entertainment industry what's up with that? I mean as a security uh, expert I wouldn't expect you to pick up entertainment at the same time. Well remember I told you from my early age I was an actor I was a singer I was a performer um i was the president of the dramatic society for my school oh so you went that deep the fact that you are creative and and, and that, that is the problem we have in africa 